a waterproof pen, and a waterproof notepad? We gotta test this out. Let's talk about two essential items I take with me whenever I'm on the go. A pen and a notepad. They aren't pocket carry items, so I store them in my day pack along with the rest of my everyday carry roster. I have three reasons why I carry a pen and a pad, with the first reason being conveying thoughts and ideas is just more fluid for me on paper. The second reason is I just remember things better when I write them down. And lastly, because I'm a visual designer, it's important for me to draw any concepts and mock-ups on the fly. This is the Write in the Rain All-Weather Notebook number 735, which comes with simplified conversion charts and ruler markings. The brand's about page talks about its history and states, the Right in the Rain story began nearly a century ago in the forests of the Great Northwest. Entrepreneur Jerry Darling recognized the logging industry's need for a durable material that could be written on and survive in poor weather conditions. Jerry developed a special coating that created a unique moisture shield on hand-dipped sheets of paper that he and his wife Mary processed at their home. From humble beginnings, our first all-weather paper was born. This is the Fisher Space Pen Cap-O-Matic, a pen developed for NASA during the Apollo mission in 1968. The pen had a myriad of reasons as to why it was groundbreaking. Since it was to be used in space, the pressurized ink cartridge allowed for consistent and controlled expulsion of ink through the ballpoint. According to the Fisher Space Pen Company themselves, all Fisher Space Pens are handcrafted and able to write underwater over grease, at any angle, upside down, three times longer than the average pen in extreme temperatures ranging from minus 30 degrees Fahrenheit to plus 250 degrees Fahrenheit and in zero gravity. Now to prove to you that these two items are a match made in heaven, I'll be writing on a sheet from the Right in the Rain notepad number 735 while it's submerged underwater. To begin, We'll even dunk the space pen underwater for a few to test its ink cartridge housing. So far so good with no interaction between the ink and the water. No blotting, no nothing. There's absolutely no smearing of ink nor lessening of ink output. And in fact, this water test is a more practical test over writing in the Arctic regions or in a desert, and even more practical than writing in space. Unless, of course, you are an astronaut. Now, some of you watching might be asking what the big deal is, but when you see how this regular household pen writes in wet conditions, in this case underwater, you'll appreciate how admirable the Fisher Space Pen really is. And there you have it. The results speak for themselves. Not only is this pen incapable of writing on wet surfaces, but I tested this pen a day after filming this demo and the ink output was completely compromised and failed to write any further, even on a dry sheet of paper. The worst part was that most of what was written using the regular pen was almost completely gone after lifting the paper out of the water.
Here you can see where most of the waterproofing resides in the Write in the Rain notebook sheet, but even the bordering edges seem to have a little bit of that waterproof layering and still retains anything you'd write in those areas. It's just more concentrated in the main central writing area. If you found any value in this video, I'd appreciate a thumbs up. Maybe you can consider subscribing to the channel where I talk about functional daily wardrobe as well as everyday carry, and I'll be sharing the in-house processes of what I'm doing with the channel as well. So with that said, I'm your friend Chris Flores. Thanks again for joining me here on Modern Regimen. And remember to always follow your regimen. I'll talk to you guys soon. I'll see you on the next video.